actually, uh, I could answer the question, but you know, like choosing the names for the characters of the movie, uh, even if it was not me who wrote the material, actually it was with a conversation with my editor. He raised he because he likes to research the definition of names, and it was it was very interesting when that Magnus means like the great one, and Maximilian means the greater one. So I asked the, I asked the writer if he had any intentions, and he doesn't even know. <laughs> and now I don't even know that Felix means the ha uh, the happy one. So I guess it's a very instinctive process to to name characters, and I'm, I'm glad I, they sort of have meanings now. <laughs> the next time I'm asked, I will tell them it's because you know <laughs> I know the meaning. Uh, and I guess the coming of age movie is so tied up with gay narratives because it's really, I mean for me as a filmmaker back in the Philippines not a lot of movies represent the LGBT in a very real and humane way. It's always like caricatures or punchlines to jokes and because I, I love, I mean it's because I love youth movies. Uh, I love Stand By Me if you know Stand By Me. It's those kind of movies that speak to me and, and I sort of want to talk to have a dialogue, I mean making movies, I want to have a dialogue with my fellow youth, so that's why I made the movie. But I guess this movie, I think the, 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 the thing you're asking is it's sort of very depressing about, it's sort of even not talking about transitioning to something else, it's sort of like just being stuck in that very, uh, in that crisis. Uh, and I think it's important, especially in the Philippines, because you know, even this film, when it was publicly shown, it was banned for audiences below 18 years old, and we made the film for teenagers. So, uh, so there's really a problem, and I think because that problem exists, it reflects on the angst and the, I guess, the negativity that I'm feeling when I when I sort of want to talk about stories about the youth in the Philippines. I hope that answered the que that answers the question because uh, it's a very it's not pessimistic but it's sort of just acknowledging the reality of this crisis. It's tied up to a lot of things, but mainly because you know it's hard to identify with yourself in such a situation. That's why I had that insight about you know boyhood. That's very negative. <laughs> I guess what's very specific about Too Cool to Be Forgotten is is that it deals with sort of like the how, the relationship of the Americans with with the Filipino, but not just the general Filipino, but this small provincial community where where the Americans held a, an air base back in the day, but because Pinat, there's this volcano eruption that devastated this whole community that these American fathers started leaving the, the country. So there were a lot of, you know, there were a lot of uh, half American kids there that, that grew up without fathers. And that's why the film deals with a lot of, you know, like the power relations of the Philippines and America. And, and, and for us to sort of go into that territory, into that issue, uh, we wanted to portray it not just in a black and white kind of thing, so we had two siblings that could sort of show how America has befriended us in a cunning way, in a, in a very deceiving way, in a lot of ways, you know, it's, it's a very complicated relationship because we sort of benefit from each other, you know, that, that the friendship between the main character and the brothers, you don't know if it's you know, a beneficial or good for them, it's always like a very gray area, it's like a very complex area. So I guess in order to achieve what we wanted to say about the Filipino-American relationship, we had to, we had to do such complex characters, you know, it's, it's not just because we have a bad guy here that the bad guy has to be hated. I think, uh, it's great for you to ask that because in the Philippines, this was never a question. Uh, the other interview also asked the same question. I was like, oh, actually, back, back in the Philippines, no one asked or questioned those because I guess it's a striking reality. And, 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 the, and the educational system there, it's, I mean, it, it was very deliberate for us. Uh, it was obvious for us that we had to make an, a very intelligent character 
that looks down even on the teachers because he wants to leave the place you know it's because it's it's about this very personal displacement this uh, disconnection towards this place uh, feel, feeling like it doesn't belong like all the characters here feel like they don't belong to this place and and for us to sort of emphasize that is to is to not exaggerate the reality but just to show it uh, I don't know if you noticed but like there's all these small nuances that I don't know if you noticed but there was this teacher at the very first that was imposing a strict English only policy but her accent is actually very hard uh, which is common to that province because all the sentences start with like a, a, an extra age or something so that's always like a funny a uh, funny anecdote of teachers back in that province, and 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 I think even the 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 seductive teachers, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> uh, and these were, and I I, I was also excited to sh present that in film because uh, not a lot of films show that kind of reality, uh, and because the film deals with you know power play using sexuality and. Everything we had to include, uh, even stories like that. But I think I remember now that uh, uh, a teacher who watched the the film criticized our portrayal of the educational system. But you know, it's it's a sad reality <laughs> because uh, we really wanted to do a very blank character. You know, like a character that who does not know himself. And I think. Uh, the device of the journal was to sort of give a dialogue of that character with himself, you know, like trying to write his story. It's a very, you know, it's sort of a convenient device for this film, but I think it worked. It worked in the sense that, that, that the moment you see him standing up and no one else in that class stands up, means that has his life has turned. I think for the worse, uh, 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 no spoilers, <laughs> but but yeah, I think uh, uh, that journal device was sort of beyond its its convenient uh, use. It is is that we really wanted to just you know uh, portray a student that 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 loved the English language so much. You know, like I don't know if if you also see the nuance that his writing is actually very. Uh, it's not so good. It's 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 writing in the sense that you try to abuse the 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 thesaurus. You know that kind of writing. It's flowery. It's 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 inessential. There's a lot of useless words. So that's really uh, the point of the journal is to show another side of 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 the Western culture trying to pervade pervade uh, the Filipino. But like in the end, when he tries to get to know himself, this is this is not my story. It's not supposed to be written that way. It's not supposed to be an English story, right? Uh, so when the moment he passes it, it, it speaks a lot of that is final action as a character. It's it's not passing this story that's written in such a unreal unrealistic way. Uh, it's not personal anymore because he doesn't use his language. It's uh, it's not him. So I think that's that was a story device that that informed him as a character. What changed in him? They always ask that, and I think it's actually a scene that I that I tried to force my way through it because it was not in the material. My producer did it. All, they was, he was also asking that question, and I guess uh, because the film has a very distinct shift in tone. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it started off as a very romantic feel good comedy but there's this point in the movie where they start talking about murder they start talking about uh, and then the character acts very differently and it's a sudden shift in tone that i think would be assisted by that opening scene uh and why the beetle <laughs> because i think this film is also i think the play of nature is very important uh uh, because I'm a regional filmmaker back in the Philippines, it's imp it's important for me to to make the landscapes sort of like a character in the movie, and and I guess I just sort of wanted to think of something that relates to nature. That that there's this character who thinks he's control of of nature, 
but but towards the end when you find out about his character uh, because of the volcanic eruption his house was buried underneath ashfall uh, and he thought that th this this first friend that he had even nature couldn't take it away from him but you know uh, there are a lot of things that are bigger than us and and for a young kid to be acknowledged of that fact uh, is, is I think striking for me uh, it's 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 a note of your that you're just like a speck like a little speck in the dust <laughs> you're like a blip in the galaxy so that I think that's that's really just my intention it's it's to set the mood and to sort of inform that sudden shift in tone oh actually I'm honored that this is our international premiere so it's the first time that that we showed the movie uh, in an international scene uh, uh, we, we made the film because of a local grant, so it was shown in a local festival, and then a major distribution company released it publicly, but then, you know, what I said about having a very restricted rating, uh, a lot of the theaters pulled out the cinema even before it showed because of the restriction. Uh, so now we've been looking for other audiences, and I guess uh, I'm happy that, that, that this festival <laughs> took us in, and. And now I'm, I'm trying to reach out to a different audience, so, yeah. Well, the Philippines is a very conservative and Catholic country. Uh, that's why this film is... <laughs> uh, I was inspired, actually, after that happened, because it's... it's, ma it's we got, all got angry. <laughs> because, yeah, that's the point. Even, even the audiences, like, there was, there was this online backlash. They were tagging... That, that 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 government institution that that banned us uh, because we you know we made the film for for young kids and, and and a lot of young kids wanted to see it because it's interestingly uh, it's been a long time that that a, a gay film has been distributed had a chance to be distributed in theaters so yeah the Phillips is not used to this kind of narrative I think we had a generally positive uh, positive, uh, support we, we were supported a lot by the LGBT community. It was even them who tried to make uh, private screenings because because then we wouldn't be able to show it in theaters. We found we we had to look for other venues that that had to, that could show it to a small audience. So there were these uh, other LGBT groups or institutions that that helped us show this film. So I'm very lucky to have a very supportive community of because you know because these films don't exist uh, very often in, in in the Philippines. So I guess when something like this is made, uh, they they sort of want to support it, uh, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm happy in that in that sense. But you know, still not a lot of kids saw it, so that's that's sad.